Uh, right little bit little tiny tiny argument you have and some of you will have pillow fight yes you know throw pillows sometimes you throw pillow box you know pencil boxes and the pen boxes and all sorts of things and sometimes you see your parents are also fighting you know father is uh, screaming at mother mother is screaming at the father and the father is screaming with his colleague and you know okay somebody says no that's good if somebody's father parents doesn't fight that's great you are blessed <laughs> But generally people, you know, little bit of argument, little bit of debate, little bit of quarrel. Kali Yuga is the age of quarrel and hypocrisy. So only one pillar remains. And what is that pillar? Ready? Type. What is that pillar? Only one pillar remains. Truthfulness. Yes, right. Truthfulness. So now we, we, we are supposed to protect that pillar. And if we don't protect that fourth pillar also, the roof will come and sit on our head. Finished we are, right? Now there is only one pillar left. So it is the responsibility. Yes, Darsh Pradhan, right? Yes, Bhavya, everyone, correct. So this fourth pillar at some cost we have to protect this. If we don't protect the pillar, the roof is going to come and land on our head, right? So as much as possible, we should always speak truth. For even tiny things, small, small things, petty things, you know, we should not speak a lie. And when can we speak a lie? If somebody is going to get hurt, then we can speak a lie. Then the third thing, if the truth should be spoken boldly, establish, then we should speak the truth boldly. And Prahlad is the example. Prahlad's father, Hiranyakashipu, said, Tell me who is the Supreme Lord. And whenever Prahlad said Hari, Krishna, Narayana is the Supreme Lord, immediately his father will take Prahlad and throw him inside fire, throw him from the top of the mountain in a cliff, throw him you know, at the feet of elephant and try to throw him at the mouth of, mouth of a lion, throw him you know, inside water. All kinds of torture Hiranyakashipu and his men were doing against Prahlad. They were torturing Prahlad again and again and again and again. Did Prahlad spoke a lie or did he hide the truth? Never. But he spoke boldly at the cost of his life. He knows if I, if I say this, my father is going to punish me. My father is going to throw me inside fire. My father and all these demons are going to torture me. But still, Prahalad was so courageous, so bold. He was not scared. Whenever it was required, he just said on the face, but very politely, Prahalad said, he said, my dear father, Narayana is the Supreme Lord. Are Prahalad, from where do you get all this energy? How dare you can stand and speak right in front of my face? And Prahlad will say, the same person giving you courage and energy, he is the same person encouraging me also. Very sweet boy. Then Narsingh Dev appeared from the pillar. Bang! The pillar blasted into millions of pieces. And Narsingh Dev appeared. And the scripture says, Narsingh Dev was 120 times taller than Hiranyakashipu. Imagine 120 times. When Hiranyakashipu was standing, he was standing only up to the size of the toe of Narsingh Dev. You know, foot cut toe. Hiranyakashipu was that size and Narsingh Dev was 120. You know, amazing, amazing. And some nowadays when we say this, people say, no, 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 I don't believe. Come on, how can a person be like that? People don't believe. But it is true. There is a whale called Blue Mammoth Whale. You know, I don't know whether you have heard it. You can go in the Google and check and YouTube, you can check. It's called Blue Mammoth Whale. The whale is 40 times of an elephant. Imagine, you all have seen an elephant in India, right? 40 times of an elephant and that's there and you can see the video in you know in all that internet 40 times so you can understand what is the size of that whale 
huge it is. It is huge. When it just turns and flaps its fin, you know, there will be, it's like tsunami. Water will be coming out of the ocean. Mammoth whale. Yes, blue mammoth whale. Amazing. So people actually don't know. So when Narshikadev appeared, Narshikadev was like 120 times huger than Prahlad. It's sorry, Hiranyakashipu. Hiranyakashipu was like, oh, he was stunned. He was shocked. And he was like an insect in front of Lord Narshinga. Killer whale, right? Then what Narshinga Dev did, he started playing, playing with his fingers, nail. You know, you know that song? Tavaka Rakamalavare Nakam Adbuta Shringam Dalita Hiranyakashipu Tanubringam Keshavadruta Narahari Rupa. Um, in that, there is a says, you know. Uh, tavakara Kamala, yeah, Tavakara Kamala Vare Nakam. Nakam, you know, Nakam means nail. So, when Hiranyakashipu saw Narshing Dev was like 120 times tall, he, he got scared for a second. Still, he thought, I should not get scared. If I get scared, all my followers also will get scared. So, what he did, he took his sword and shield and he jumped against Narshing Dev. You know, he was like. Flying like, like a mosquito or an insect flies, he flew like that against Narshing Dev. And then you know what Narshing Dev did? He took his nail and tong, pushed him through the nail. Just hit him with the nail because he was only that much size. So Narshing Dev tuck, hit him with the nail, then he flew and fell down. Wee, tum, he fell down on the other side. Again he woke up and said, Ah, oh, hurry, you are cheating me. You are doing this. Again he came with the left nail, you know, gave one this thing. So Lord was playing with the nails for a long time with Narshing Dev. You know, finally Krishna got bored. Narshing Dev got bored playing for a long time. So what he took? He took him and pulled him off, tore him off, everything. Took his intestines, large intestines, small intestine, everything out of his belly. You know, they finished. Right? All finished. Everything got over. Hiranyakashipu got killed. So Lord is huge. Then Narshing Dev started roaring. You know, you should see the lion's mane. You know, lion's head. Lion head has got mane, the beautiful hair. Actually, when you see a lion, a majestic one walking, his head is like sunflower, full of mane. And when he turns, it will be like shaking like that. Right? And Narshing Dev's head, that hair, the mains were nothing but flames of fire. Um, it is flames of fire. Like we have hair and he had hair of fire. And when Narshing Dev was moving, roaring, he was moving. You know, all the Devi Devadas got scared. Everybody got scared. Even Lakshmi Devi who is staying in the chest of Narshing Dev slowly got down and walked off. And Narshing Dev asked, Lakshmi, where are you going? I have got some busy work. I have to go to market and buy vegetables. She ran off. She got scared. She could not withstand the temperature of Narshinga Dev. Ugram, Viram, Mahavishnum, Jwalantam. Jwalantam means flames of fire. Jwalantam Sarvato Mukham. His face was covered with fire roaring. Lord Shiva did not come closer. Lord Brahma didn't come closer. Indra was not at all seen. He was ran away from the place. Nobody was dare to go in front of Narshing Dev. Then everybody is telling, Prahlad, you go. Prahlad, you go. You know, they were pushing Prahlad. And Prahlad smilingly, because he, he got conviction. Yes, true Darsh Pradhan, like a small bee, true. So, like a, like a small, you know, very innocent. Because Prahlad knew, Lord, my Lord will protect me always. He was so confident. Then he went and dropped garland. The moment Narshing Dev saw Prahlad, you know, you can understand the size of Narshing Dev, so huge. He simply lifted Prahlad and put him on his lap, you know, so tiny he was on the lap of Narshing Dev. And Narshing Dev's arms were like full of blood. And he was doing like this to Prahlad, you know, on his head, like that. And how do lions show love to the lion cub? How lions show love to the lion cub? The animals will lick. So what Narshing Dev did? Started licking Prahlad. Wang, wang, full licking Prahlad. You know? So Prahlad was feeling so happy, so polite, so bold he was. 
so never be scared to say a truth we should always be bold whatever it is there may be some trouble there may be some hindrances but at the end truth will win okay so that is lesson number 3 about truth so again go back lesson number 1 we should always speak the truth lesson number 2 the truth should be spoken sweetly and politely and lesson number 3 you should not be scared to speak the truth be bold like prahlad and all right then you know there is a nice story in in uh, panchatantra you know there is a small nice story in panchatantra um a woodcutter a woodcutter went to a river bank and uh, it was a simple simple fellow poor man he has got a beautiful wife in his house two children no money at all a very simple humble man he went and he he was chopping a wood because his job is like cutting the wood taking it selling it in the market and he will get little money very simple man so the, the tree was standing next to the river river you know close to river bank yes the woodcutter story many of you know and many of you don't know maybe so he started chopping the tree while chopping he the, the axe slipped and fell inside the river then one devi the devi in charge of jungle the devi in charge of the river you know like we have ganga mata yamuna mata and all so the river in charge she came out and he saw this man was sobbing and crying because he had only one axe and that also is lost how he will cut wood then the lady asked the devi asked what happened he said said they narrated the whole story so the devi went inside the water and came back with a golden axe as is this your axe and woodcutter honestly said no and second time she came with a silver axe is this yours and she said he said no and third time she came with his axe original one then he said yes 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 that's my axe thank you so much thank you so much she became so happy with his honesty she gifted all the three axes to him imagine if we were in that situation and your axe slipped and fell inside your pencil when you fell inside the ocean river and suddenly the goddess comes and gives you a golden pen pencil with a barbie doll on the back and you know some kind of keychain and this and that right you know with all the studded stones and you know there's a mobile phone attached to the pencil and all sorts of things and the devi asks okay is this your pencil and you will say definitely yes it is it's my pencil my pencil give it to me give it to me right but the woodcutter was very honest very honest then he he was so happy he got a golden axe he got a silver axe he's rich now he went back home and he's you know envious jealousy neighbor he was sorry from where did you get all this golden axe silver axe you know from where did you get all the axes and he the honest man you know he doesn't speak lie he simply said this is what happened the devi asked me and you know she became so happy with me she gave me all the three axes he was happy he said next day this fellow went the neighbor he also took an axe which is a rotten waste axe anyway he wanted to throw it he took that axe went to the river bank and he was not even trying to cut the tree he simply took the axe and threw it inside the river and again the goddess came and she came with the golden axe and she asked oh my dear farmer wood cutter is this your axe and this man is from uae dubai and this axe woodcutter said yes 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 that golden axe is mine the golden axe is mine then the devi said okay and she went inside the water and she never came back she disappeared he lost his axe also right so we should always speak the truth maybe sometimes the answer may be delayed the judgment may be delayed what you are supposed to get may be delayed but when you speak the truth 
you always win you always